It's the early afternoon of August 14th, 2011. The venue is the Wembley Arena in London. The occasion, the World Championship Men's Singles Final. the Men's Singles. Lee Chongwei and Lin Dan. What a match ahead of us. And thousands of Babington fans in attendance are about to witness what will go down in history as the greatest Babington match ever. Hell, I think it could be one of the greatest sporting matches ever. The night boxers in the 15th round of a world title fight. Now, I'll admit, that is a bold statement to make, because there will be some Babington fans who will point to other matches being better. And I get it, there are other matches. And you could also argue the two players in this match had later matches that were even better. But personally, I say this match is the greatest badminton match ever, and one of the greatest sporting matches ever, because it went beyond the badminton, with a story behind it that truly elevated what played out on court. It's a story that is the real reason I make this sort of statement, and it's that story that I want to tell you today. To get a real grasp on this story, first I must talk about the two players who were involved and the rivalry that they had. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details because I'd be here all day. That's a whole topic in and of itself, one I will save for a later video. But in essence, Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei were the top two players in badminton at the time. In fact, Lee Chong Wei had been the world number one since 2008 and had already amassed an impressive number of international titles. And Lin Dan, well, he'd been at the top of Bampton since 2004. He'd been in every All England final since bar one, and he'd already won three world titles, an Asian Games, and the biggest of them all, the Olympics. An Olympics in which he defeated Lee Chong Wei in the final. So yeah, individually, these two were extra special and stood out above the rest. That's not to say there wasn't any other competition in men's singles at the time, there certainly was, but it was clear that Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei were head and shoulders above the rest. So for this matter, it was only obvious that when they faced each other, often in a final, there was a buzz about their matches, a buzz which quickly became a rivalry. This rivalry was heightened not only because they were similar in age, had opposing styles, they even played with opposing hands, and could clearly play at godlike levels but because in the early days of their careers, they both had some pretty damn amazing and memorable matches. Most notable, the two they had in 2006. One was in the Malaysian Open final, where Lee Chong Wei saved eight consecutive match points to win, something which became the main focal point of the movie about Lee Chong Wei, which was made 12 years later in 2018. And then at the All England in the semi-finals, they had an extraordinary match lasting over 90 minutes, but this time it was Lin Dan who prevailed. When you combine this with the fact they played each other in Babington's biggest finals multiple times over a number of years, then it cemented their rivalry as the greatest in Babington history, and I'd say one of the greatest in all of sports. But I fear I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, because we're talking about 2011, and at that point in time, whilst they had played in some big finals, they hadn't yet had the kind of major final that was going to really ignite the Babington world. They hadn't yet had the major final where they both brought their highest level. This brings us nicely back to 2011, where this story behind the 2011 World Championships really begins. Because up until 2011, when these two faced each other in the big finals, such as the Olympics or the All England, it wasn't exactly close. The 2008 Olympic final that I mentioned earlier was the most one-sided final in Babington Olympic history, with Lin Dan being flawless and his performance being heralded for the rest of time. Whilst Lee Chong Wei was devastated by it, looking visibly distraught after the final, feeling like he'd let everyone down, something he admitted in an interview after the Olympic Games. And a year later at the All England Championships in 2009, once again they faced each other, with this being Lee Chong Wei's first All England final. This match had some real interest going into it, but not just because it was once again these two amazing players in a big final, but because it was the first big final since the Olympics. And so everyone was wondering how Lee Chong Wei would mentally 
Oh. How much do you say that Olympic final in Beijing has psychologically scarred the mind of Li Chongwei? Because he was totally outclassed in that final. Do you think that's affected him and, and maybe is a problem for him in this encounter? Most people did believe that Li Chongwei would be stronger, that he would have learned from that Olympic experience and that he could avenge his Olympic destruction. Players, but you're a great believer that Li Chong Wei really can win this. I definitely believe that uh, Li Chong Wei has a good chance. Well, that didn't exactly happen. Whilst this final was far closer and more competitive than the Olympic final, Lin Dan once again won rather comfortably. And in another example, one year on from that All England, at another major final, this time at the 2010 Asian Games in Guangzhou, Li Chong Wei once again lost to Lin Dan. And whilst this time it did go the full distance, the third game was a runaway victory by Lin Dan. So three consecutive years and three major final defeats by Li Chong Wei to Lin Dan. By this point, a pattern had clearly emerged, one that seemed like it could never be changed. If these two faced in a major final, Lin Dan would always be the winner. It seemed Li Chong Wei just didn't have it in him to win. A sentiment felt across the badminton community. But then, following that Asian Games final, things started to change. Before those Asian Games, Li Chong Wei was winning plenty of tournaments. I mean, you don't become the world number one without doing that. But after those Asian Games, Li Chong Wei seemed to go up a level. I can remember watching him in the months that followed and his level of consistency just seemed to skyrocket. The guy seemed to never make an error. And add to that a much more attack oriented style and Li Chong Wei was playing outrageous badminton and was winning tournaments with ease. You only need to look at his results between the 2010 Asian Games and the 2011 World Championships to see that. In that time he won 7 tournaments and in those 7 tournaments you want to guess how many games he lost? Only one. From 35 matches, he dropped one solitary game. That is insane. Now, it must be said that there was one tournament where he didn't win, the 2011 Korean Open. He did reach the final, but failed to convert. Want to guess who he lost to? Yep, you guessed it, Lin Dan. You might now be thinking this undermines my whole argument that things had changed following the Asian Games. Li Chong Wei was winning before the other majors, but couldn't beat Lin Dan. And now it seems he is still winning, but faces Lin Dan and loses again. And yes, you might be right. But, and it's a big but, Lin Dan and Li Chong Wei faced again in another final in 2011. And it's that result that brings my argument back on track. Because it's a result that changed people's thoughts on Li Chong Wei being able to win major tournaments, and also fueled some fire going into the World Championships. I am of course talking about the 2011 All England. I've mentioned the All England a few times in this video so far, and I've realised some of you watching might not know a what it is, and b how important it is in the world of badminton. So let me quickly explain. The All England is the biggest tournament on the regular badminton calendar. Before the World Championships were first played in 1977, it was the World Championships. And that's three virtual world titles in one day. What more could one ask for? If I could liken it to something that you've likely heard of, then the All England is to badminton what Wimbledon is to tennis. The oldest and most prestigious tournament, a tournament every player in badminton wants to win. Now, why this particular 2011 All England final is important to this story is because once again, Lin Dan and Li Chong Wei met in the final. It was yet another major final between the two. But whereas in every other encounter at these major finals went to Lin Dan, this time it was Li Chong Wei who would come out on top. And he didn't just win, he won rather comfortably. In straight games, 21-17, 21-17. Now, I'd say people weren't too shocked by the result. Everyone knew Li Chong Wei could beat Lin Dan, but it was the way in which he did that was surprising. Li Chong Wei was in the driving seat the whole way and commanded the match from start to finish. 
And it was the manner in which Lee Chong Wei beat Lin Dan that kind of changed the perception towards him in major finals against Lin Dan and at majors in general. It must be noted though that after the final, Lin Dan said that he wasn't as motivated for this final because he had already played so many matches in the China League and the German Open the week previous. But regardless, it was this particular win and the manner in which he won that changed a number of opinions and made everyone believe that maybe Li Chong Wei can actually win a major gold. It certainly got everyone excited at the prospect of another Lin Dan Li Chong Wei final later in the year at the World Championships. Following that All England final and leading towards the World Championships, both players played three more tournaments. Funnily enough, only one of those was the same one. Li Chong Wei took all three titles in Malaysia, India and Indonesia, continuing his fine run of form. Lin Dan, on the other hand, didn't have such a good time. He did win the Asia Championships, but then in Singapore he had to withdraw from the final, something which didn't go down well with the fans in attendance. And then at the Indonesia Open, the first tournament where he and Li Chong Wei were jointly entered, with everyone excited at a potential pre-Worlds final, he suffered a surprising, easy second round loss to Sho Sasaki of Japan. So all of this, these two seemingly avoiding each other, Lin Dan losing unexpectedly in Indonesia right before the World Championships, Li Chong Wei on a hot streak, the All England result, and the subsequent belief that Li Chong Wei could really win a world title, well, it all built up the anticipation for the World Championships to the max, and everyone couldn't wait for it to get underway. Any minor doubts over Lin Dan in the weeks before these World Championships were very quickly squashed in Wembley, as pretty much from the moment the Worlds got underway, it was pretty clear it was going to be a Lin Dan Lee Chong Wei final. As each round passed, they not only seemed to get stronger, but they seemed to defeat the harder opponents easier and easier. Lin Dan may have had a slight blip, dropping the opening game in his semi final to Peter Gaeda. And although it was neck and neck in the third up until around 15 all, there was never a sense he would lose. And Li Chong Wei, well, in his semi final, he brushed aside the reigning world champion Chen Jin with very little difficulty. It's wide and quite front hope the world number one, Li Chong Wei of Malaysia, was a class above the defending champion in today's semi final. With the dream final confirmed, it ignited in badminton forums, with everyone excited to see it unfold and everyone offering their opinions on the outcome. Could Li Chong Wei finally win a major? If he did, he not only win his first world title, but the first for Malaysia. A huge deal. Or will Lin Dan do it again, and not only crush Malaysian hearts and Li Chong Wei's dreams, but also become the most decorated men's singles player in world championship history? And I'd be remiss to add that whilst this was a huge event, people were also excited that this could give insight into an even bigger event on the horizon. The biggest of them all, the Olympics, which is set to be played a year later in the exact same venue. With all of this bubbling away, combined with the build-up towards this World Final, the anticipation for the Lin Dan Li Chong Wei 2011 World Final was palpable. And oh boy, did it live up to it all, and then some. From the entrance music, the London bus walkway, the MC, and the noise from the crowd, when Lin Dan and Li Shun Wei entered Wembley Arena, it felt more like two heavyweight boxers entering the ring for a heavyweight title match than a badminton match. I remember watching this live and getting goosebumps. No match felt like this before. <laughs> 
it really felt like a generation-defining moment. In fact, as I had to re-watch this match a few times for this video, I found myself getting the exact same feelings. That just highlights the magnitude of this match and the emotions it provoked. When the match finally did get underway, both players started well, hitting winners and moving fast. But it was Lee Chong Wei who seemed stronger of the two, who took control earlier and settled much faster. It was a similar sense, at least to me anyway, to how the All England final from earlier in the year had felt. It was close, but it always felt like Lee Chong Wei was in control. And as the first game progressed, that feeling never shook. Even when Min Dan saved four game points. I felt Lee Chong Wei was still in control. And after Lee Chong Wei took the opening game with a thunderous smash, I felt, as I'm sure his fans did too, that this really could be Lee Chong Wei's moment. He got there in the end. Lee Chong Wei is halfway to his gold medal. Going into the second game, it still seems like Lee Chong Wei's. Even when he went off the boil a bit, Lin Dan didn't catalyze. And nearing the halfway point, it seems Lee Chong Wei had weathered the storm. But then, right after the mid-game interval where both players were separated by just one point, the tide completely changed. Lee Chong Wei's pace dropped, errors crept in, bad judgments were made, and like an expert hunter, Lin Dan sensed his moment and in the blink of an eye took command and the second game. With the manner in which Lee Chong Wei lost that second game, combined with the history between these two in major finals, it wasn't a stretch to think that maybe Lin Dan would run away with this and history would once again repeat itself. In situations like this, Lin Dan is the master, so for Lee Chong Wei to not let that happen would take something extraordinary. When I think back to watching this final, I remember having this real sense of enormity as the players walked out for the third game. So much history was on the line, so much personally for the players too, and combined with everything that led to it, I just had this unshakable feeling that there was no way this would end cleanly. And it became quickly apparent that my feelings were right. As the scoreboard edged ever closer to the finishing line, and as neither player could establish a commanding lead, the enormity of this match really set it. What was on the line came to the forefront. It seemed bigger than a world title, and in some ways, it was. Lin Dan was looking to become the most decorated men's singles world champion ever, and Lee Chong Wei had the hopes of his nation on his shoulders, as well as something to prove. That enormity of the situation was felt by everyone. This match is still one of only a handful of matches where I remember how I emotionally felt at the time. And all of those emotions came to a boiling point when it was Lee Chong Wei who got the first match point. <gasps> A match point quickly saved by Lin Dan. Lin Dan match a second match point. He's left it a second match point for Lee Chong Wei. Lee Chong Wei sitting on the cusp of making history. Could he do it? Time seemed to slow down. Once again, though, Lee Chong Wei was the nine. And then, in what felt like a split second, the roles were reversed. Lin Dan had championship points, history making points, and this time, Lin Dan showed to everyone why he's regarded as the greatest player ever, and in the process broke Lee Chong Wei's and Malaysia's hearts. Four times world champion! Lin Dan does it again! A monumental battle! That world final really was amazing. The greatest badminton match ever. Morton Frost put it best after the match. Incredible match, you know, hats off, it was, you can't get it better. But personally, like I stated at the start of this video, I genuinely believe this world final was one of the greatest sporting matches ever. Yes, I might be biased, but I think it can hold up to that claim. It's a match that is not only praised by fans, but it was also highly praised by other top players. None more so than the bronze medalist from those world championships, Peter Gaeda, who said this on the Bampton Experience podcast in 2022. And then watching him and Chung Wei play, yeah, uh, I think maybe one of the most incredible matches that I've watched from the sidelines. Now, I did have all the intentions in the world to try and analyze this match. 
to give you my perspective of how it all unfolded. But that proved rather futile, because if I'm honest, every time I watched it, I couldn't help but find myself getting wrapped up in it all, in the emotions, in the amazing badminton on display, and as I've hopefully explained well enough to you in this video, in the whole story behind it. A story which took what was already an insane match, elevated it, and made it legendary. Once again, everyone, if you've made it this far in the video, then I just want to say a huge thank you. Going through this match and all the history involved was really amazing for me. I mean, I did know quite a lot of the details, but still, it gave me an extra appreciation for what was a truly fantastic final. If you somehow haven't seen Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei's 2011 World Final, and you're interested in doing so, which I would highly recommend, then don't worry, I've given the link to it in the description below. And finally, if you like this video and are interested in more videos like it, then please do hit the subscribe button, as well as ringing that bell so that you're notified of when the next video comes out. Thanks again, everyone. I'm Ben Beckman. I'll see you next time.